This is Cabinet News. Thank you so much for choosing us for that balanced and biased in factor news. My name is Sharon Kalimbola. The top stories on our desk, the National Democratic Congress Party Media Director to report to Shimba Kambuli to the Drug Enforcement Commission. Mombwa Central Member of Parliament describes constituency development fund disbursement as chaotic. And the European Union confident of high voter turnout in the August 12th general elections. In international news, descendants of freed slaves in Kenya seek recognition. And in sports news, Malu Mulundu Empires wins Margaret Wanakatu Christmas tournament. Join me shortly for the details. 2021 is finally here. Zambia is at the crossroads heading towards general elections this August. In the world where fake news, biased reporting on national issues has become the order of the day. In a world where social media in most cases spills lies and exaggerated information, insightful coverage, Zambia needs one media. Living in a country where people are slowly promoting tribalism, hatred, bitterness and revenge, political temperature is heating up and people's hearts are perplexed. Zambia needs one media. Zambia being a Christian nation living under the lordship of Jesus Christ, the nation cannot afford a compromised gospel. Zambia needs a prophetic media house. For hope, peace and unity, Zambia needs Kamnet Television for non-biased, factual reporting, balanced opinion, accurate news coverage, Zambia needs Kamnet Television. For national projects and development of our beloved country Zambia, watch Kamna TV on channel 274 DSTV, channel 98 on Go TV, and channel 106 on Topstar. Remember, Kamna TV is not just another channel. Once again, thank you for joining us. Transparency International Zambia is impressed with the Anti-Corruption Commission we, because it has given a comprehensive update on their work for the last three years with a focus on community education, corruption prevention, investigations and prosecutions. The Corruption Watchdog has commended the Commission for its community education programs, which comprises various public outreach interventions aimed at equipping the public with information on corruption to enable them to participate in the fight against corruption. The TIZ Executive Director has, however, pointed out that ACC currently suffers from a problem of negative public perception about their capacity to function as an effective anti-corruption body. Mr. Nambia has since urged ACC to enhance collaborations with the Office of the Auditor General and to be more proactive in picking up cases for investigations from the Auditor General's report. Our call is for the SEC to open themselves up more to the public in order for the public to appreciate the efforts that the Commission is making in leading the anti-corruption fight in Zambia. One way of doing this would be to hold regular open days for the media and public to directly interact with the Commission and have an opportunity to learn more about the work that it does. Another way the Commission can redeem itself in this regard is by demonstrating impartiality and professionalism in pursuing all corruption cases at both higher and lower levels of society, regardless of political affiliation. Now, the negative public perception um, that the SEC currently has has the potential to hinder its work, especially where public involvement is sought. And our hope is that the Commission will do everything in their power to change this negative narrative. Regarding the Commission's corruption prevention activities, we note uh, that much of the focus has been on supporting integrity committees in the public and private sector, and it is gratifying to note that the number of these committees has grown to 116 over the last three years. We however wish to point out that from our experience, a significant proportion of these committees only exist on paper and are lacking the internal operational support to enable them to function as effectively as they should. 
The Democracy and Motherland Defenders Coalition has welcomed the publishing of the Provisional Register for the August 2021 elections by the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Speaking on behalf of the coalition, Andrew Ntewewe says this is a clear sign of Zambia's preparedness to the polls. Ms. Ntewewe notes that the captured number of over 7 million voters gives confidence that the majority of Zambians' population will come out in numbers and exercise their right to franchise. He has therefore called on political parties to encourage their members to ensure that they verify the details as captured by the Electoral Commission of Zambia. Meanwhile, Ms. Santawewe has touched on the importance of tabling the Cyber Crimes and Cyber Securities Bill in the Legislative House as this will help in curbing social media abuse in the area of elections. We want to believe that Parliament will definitely be in a position to hear the views of various stakeholders. All in all, the Democracy and Motherland Defenders Coalition believes that the Cyber Crimes and Security Bill is a very important precondition to peaceful election. It also enhances our democratic space as it gives citizens an opportunity to fully participate in the national discourse of their country without fear of being bullied or being intimidated by abusive users of the cyberspace. The bill is therefore responsive to enhancing democracy and good governance in our motherland. I want to indicate and inform the general public through the media that the coalition in an effort to contribute to peaceful and non-violent environment ahead of the 2021 elections shall cause to be signed a peace accord among political leaders in April 2021. The peace accord will be a commitment by political leaders that they will uphold democratic tenets, that they will commit to a violence-free election, and that they will agree to accept election results. This, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, countrymen and women, we believe is very cardinal to having peaceful elections. The European Union is confident that Zambia will hold elections and will not experience voter apathy as suggested by other stakeholders. European Union delegations charged the affairs. Bruno Hensers tells Cabinet News that the Electoral Commission of Zambia captured more people during the voter registration than expected. The commission recorded a provisional total of over 7 million registered voters, of which after de the provisional register now stands at 7 million and two, 393 registered voters, representing a 0.2% marginal reduction from the initial 83.4% to 83.2% of eligible voters arising from the duplicate records. Mr. Hensons is confident that Zambia will turn up in numbers to exercise their right to vote. And Mr. Hensons says the EU delegation is ready to monitor the August 12th elections. To be honest, I don't see voter apathy. I think the uh, voter registration was, you know, uh, a great success in so far, as uh, you know, it, uh, I think it was something like 84% of the eligible voters they registered. So I think this is quite a good sign um, that we can uh, expect. Um, a very good turnout. That's quite possible. Let's say we have an invitation from the government of Zambia and we are at the moment actively considering the feasibility of EU election monitoring. Now, drama has continued to unfold in the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC. Uh, Zaka Fumba led camp maintains its allegiance to the UPND alliance a day after its embattled leader, Chishimba Kamwili, distanced the party from the pact. Speaking during a media briefing, party interim president Joseph Akafumba says he is disappointed with the general conduct of Mr. Kamwili, NDC acting vice president. President rather Joseph Akafumba on Monday, 1st March 2021, he, ex he said that Dr. Kamwili is no longer the party president. Meanwhile, NDC media director Emmanuel Malite has announced his intentions to report Mr. Kamwili to investigative wings.
Most political alliances in modern day Zambia have been known to fail due to what could be termed as selfishness and failure to consolidate political party agendas. The UPND NDC alliance was expected to be a success following assurances by its leaders as the two political parties claimed to have the same goal which is to liberate the Zambian people from the patriotic front administration and steer a progressive development agenda for the country. But following the division that have emerged in the party, that is slowly becoming impossible. Mr. Kambwili on Saturday hit back on the Akafumba-led camp by suspending people who were part of the meeting that opted to be part of the alliance without his involvement. On Sunday, 28th December 2021, the Akafumba-led group maintained that it is the legitimate camp describing Mr. Kambwili's meeting as illegal and they maintained that they remain affiliated to the UPND alliance. But for now, I want to make it very clear in summary, that those purported suspensions are now and void because they are based on nothing. And our court matter, our matter which is in court, is active in court. We have taken this matter to court and we will not comment much on it. But it is our hope, like Mr. Mumbia said, that surely we cannot allow a 0.1% to divide this party. And if I'm, given, if I'm given an opportunity to meet Dr. Dr. Kambui tomorrow, as he proposed, this will be my message that, sir, 99.9 .9 is done. We cannot allow 0.1% to derail the party. The NDC media director, Emmanuel Malite, also had a word to Mr. Kambui. I want to inform the, the press and the nation that um, I'm reporting uh, Dr. Shimba Kambwili to DC. You may wish to know that uh, sometime in 2019, we went to visit the DC, questioning the empowerment fund, the presidential empowerment fund, the source of it. He's not exempted to be questioned where he got over $200,000 was seated in his house. The Vice President and Secretary General also had a message to communicate. Who is Kambwili to discourage me? Nobody will discourage me from being a politician. So Mr. Kambwili, usually when you hear children uh, insulting where they are playing, it's because they hear it from the parents. Where there is discipline, you will not hear the children using that abusive language. Kambwili has used that language of insulting people for a long time. And therefore, his minions are now following. But I have not stopped. The, the game is not over until when it's over. Leave Mr. Haka in the Ichlema out of this. It's our internal affair. Uh, we shall meet you, uh, whether legally or personally, for us to, to chart the way forward, but leave Mr. Haka in the Ichlema and Mr. Milupi, the chairman of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the alliance, now called the UPND alliance, alone. If the NDC is to be part of the UPND alliance and make a positive impact, then it has to resolve its internal differences. Patrick Soko, Camlet News. Once again, we will continue to follow up this story until it reaches its logical conclusion. In other news, the Youth Development Organization has advised political parties against using young people as tools for political violence. Organization Executive Director Partner Siawutuba has urged young people to be counted in the governance of the country. Mr. Siawutuba has therefore stressed on the need for young people to denounce violence ahead of the August polls. Young people can equally vie for leadership. But unfortunately, senior politicians, because of their business, they have confined young people to only playing a role of causing violence uh, to, against other political parties participating in the electoral process. They have not uh, opened up to allow them to participate. So it's not only the politicians that are busy with it, but they also have not realized their potential to become leaders in the political party. So when it's not in one, 
I think it is important that it is very clear that no young person should be abused politically uh, to be, begin becoming a tool of violence. But young people should also realize that the people that you are sent to political violence are not even related to this with that sentence. So they should at one time ask this group for the sentence to take their son you know, or their next or their daughter you know, to go and fight other young people. The many times they abuse the youth who are not even related to them because they have got them out there. So I think that this is very difficult and again we are trying to help with the uh, propagating uh, values and ethics. And I think this is very wrong that politicians can go as far as abusing young people to abuse other people who are related to not very, very Mombwa Central Member of Parliament, Credo Nanjua, has described the Patriotic Front's disbursement of Constituency Development Fund, CDF, as chaotic over the past five years. The lawmaker was speaking when he commissioned the community hammer mill under a women's club in Momba Wood, said his constituency has only received funding three times in the last five years. He notes that CDF is an important component of community development, adding that the 1.6 million is not enough to be shared among the 12 wards in Mumbwa Central, resulting into a number of projects being left incomplete. Mr. Nanjua notes that in 2017, only 700,000 kwacha was released for the constituency instead of the 1.4 million kwacha. Meanwhile, government says constituency development fund is only given as and when the funds are available and that government does not give arrears of CDF. It is the worth mentioning that CDF is a very important fund for development in the constituencies. CDF is people's fund. This is the fund where the community, members of the community are able to mention what exactly they want. So we have been asking the PF government to increase the allocation of CDF, but they have not realized the importance of CDF. But every time when issues are put in the House, in Parliament, they are always referring that we use CDF. But CDF that they are providing is not enough. You can imagine having 1.6 million to share among the top words is not an easy thing. We are very grateful that the UPND under the leadership of Agenda HDM is talking of increasing the CDF. If we increase CDF to less, not less than 5 million in a year, and it becomes constitutional that CDF must be released annually. And in the first quarter of every fiscal year, we are going to do more projects for the people. President Edgar Lungu says his government remains a progressive force for national development as seen from many transformative projects done in many sectors such as agriculture, tourism, health, infrastructure development. The head of state says the Patriotic Front remains dynamic in adapting to new challenges when implementing the vision for a better Zambia as guided by the will of the people. Hence, after August 2021, the Patriotic Front Party and government will have the catchphrase which will say putting Zambians first. He was speaking at the elective convention of the Patriotic Front in Luapola province. And President Lungu has expressed delight at the level Luapola province has been developing ever since the Patriotic Front formed government in 2011. He notes that under the leadership of the PF government, the province is attracting investment resulting in job creation, a situation described as a plus for the nation. Meanwhile, the head of state is all Patriotic Patriotic Front members to prepare themselves adequately to go beyond the finishing line and continue to run with greater determination in the quest to realize a fully transformed Zambia without leaving anyone behind. You're watching Kamnet News. Just now we take a break. Still to come, a more interesting stories. Don't go away.
From time immemorial, we have had different types of lighting options. From those that can burn down our investments in minutes to those that dig holes in our pockets due to constant replacement and huge consumption of our Zesco units. Savenda Electric introduces the new and advanced electric bulb with cutting edge technology of LED that has low power consumption, gives out bright white light and lasts up to 25,000 hours. Savenda Electric manufactures all types of LED light like plastic LED fluorescent tubes, down lights, ceiling lights, outdoor fittings, and solar street lights made to customer specifications. Let's live on the bright side of life by choosing the wide range of Savenda electric lighting solutions that are available in all leading stores and supermarkets countrywide. For orders, call 0962-642-490 or email jnbanda at savenda.com or pchabula at savenda.com. And why do you look so pale and busy scratching yourself? Uh. You know my skin is very sensitive. I've tried all the skin products and nothing seems to work. Have you tried Oracle Pure Glycerin? Oracle Pure Glycerin? What's that? Just give me a minute. Oracle Pure Glycerin gives your skin a youthful and healthy glow. Ish! You're glowing. <laughs> Don't tell me. Yes! I already know the secrets. Oracle Pure Glycerin! Try Oracle Pure Glycerin for that perfect skin. Seeker, do you know that you can advertise for as low as 150 kwacha for 30 seconds? Well, Msika is here. Advertise on Msika between 17 hours and 18 hours. Just tell us about the services that you offer and we'll gladly put you on the market. For more details, you can contact plus 260-953-995099 plus 260-962-4447. 726 or plus 260-971-177-467. Msika, allowing your business to grow. Thank you for staying on. We continue with the news. Lack of accommodation has hit Solwezi Boys Provincial STEM Secondary School. Some teachers who spoke to Kamni TV in confidence say most of the houses are occupied by teachers from other schools and retired teachers. The prevailing situation has forced teachers serving at the school to be renting in other compounds far from the school. They say this has made it difficult for them to supervise night school night shifts as this is a boarding school. Meanwhile, efforts to get a comment from the ministry in charge of general education proved futile by broadcast time. However, we will continue to press for answers on this story. Police in Luansha have received a report of a murder which occurred on Friday February 27th, 2021, at 8.50 hours at Kashikishi Tavern of Kambilombilo Compound in Luansha District, in which Finn Les Mutambo, aged 50, of house number K626, Kambilombilo Compound, reported her that her brother, identified as Victor Mutambo, aged 48, of the same abode, was murdered by a person who was identified as Michael Manunga of house number D48, also of Kambilombilo compound in Luansha district. Brief facts of the matter are that on February 27th, 2021, around 18 hours, the victim was drinking at Kashikishi Tavern, where he was seen talking to the suspect's mother, and the suspect thought that the deceased was proposing love to his mother. This is contained in a statement issued to the media by Police Deputy Public Relations Officer Danny Mwale. Brief facts of the matter are that on February 27, 2021, around 18 hours, the victim was drinking at Kashikishi Tavern, where he was seen talking to the suspect's mother, and the suspect thought that the deceased was proposing love to his mother. Eventually, the suspect picked a stone and hit the victim's left side of the ribs repeatedly. He fell down on the ground and became unconscious. He was rushed to Mikomfa Health Clinic, where he was pronounced dead. The suspect has since been arrested and is in police custody, while the body of the deceased is, is in a Thompson Hospital mortuary. 
Interesting news item there from the police in Luansha. The African Union, in partnership with the EU Trade Group and the African Business Association, have honored President Edgar Lungu with an appreciation award. The award is in recognition of the efforts and work done by President Lungu in realizing the African continent of free trade area. Zambia's ambassador to Ethiopia, Emmanuel Mwamba, received the award on behalf of President Lungu at a ceremony held in Atsababa. After he received the award on behalf of President Lungu, Mesa Mwamba said, President Lungo led concerted efforts to ensure that broad consultations were done in the AFCTA among its stakeholders. He said President Lungo also assured the cabinet approved the trade agreement and was later ratified by parliament. The appreciation award ceremony was held on Friday, 26th February 2021 for African heads of state and government whose countries have so far ratified the African continental free trade area. The African Union, in collaboration with AE Trade Group and Africa Business Associations, have honored His Excellency the President, President Edgar Chagwalungu. This is in recognition and contribution he has made towards the work of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area that came in effect and began trading on 1st January 2021. You are aware that now there are 36 African countries that signed a declaration in, in Rwanda, Kigali, and then proceeded to sign the agreement and now have ratified through their legislature, the FCTM. And Zambia is among the 36 countries. We were honored to receive this award on behalf of His Excellency the President. The award was given uh, to 36 other heads of states at the African Union uh, Commission headquarters here in Addis Ababa. Zambia's High Commissioner to India, Judith Kapijimpanga, says Zambia is one of the best investment destinations in Africa after ranking fourth most peaceful country in Africa, according to the 2020 Global Peace Index. At a virtual conference organized by Bharat Chamber of Commerce, Calcutta, and Zambia's High Commissioner in India, Mrs. Kapijimpanga says investors should target Zambia's energy, construction, and tourism, as well as agriculture sectors, as prioritized by President. Galungu. She says that tourists can now go to Zambia while taking into consideration the strict adherence to public health guidelines stipulated by Zambian government amid the coronavirus pandemic. The High Commissioner says government is further encouraging private sector investment in the healthcare industry with the objective of making Zambia a medical tourism hub for the region. This is contained in a video statement made available for by First Secretary for Press and Tourism at the Zambian Mission in India, Bangwe Navile. Zambia boasts of political stability, peace and democracy. We have adherence to the rule of law, positive and investor-friendly environment, investment guarantees as well as security. Zambia has abundant natural resources, presenting an excellent investment and trade opportunity. Private sector-driven government economic policy is readily in place. Zambia boasts of attractive investment incentives for investors. Duty-free access to the regional, wider Africa, European Union, and USA markets. Zambia has progressive banking, legal, and insurance services of international standards. The Ministry of Commerce, Trade and Industry Permanent Secretary Mushuma Molenga says there is need to expedite the plans to improve infrastructure at Jimbe border posts in Ikelengi district of northwestern province. Mr. Molenga added that government's plan is to put up a one-stop border post facility in order to enhance trade between Angola and Zambia. He further said he will work closely with his counterpart at the Ministry of Infrastructure so that the Mwinilunga Ikelengi Jimbe Road is worked on to ensure sure that trade and economic activities at the border post are enhanced. The permanent secretary was speaking to Nais after touring Jimbe border post and the Angolan side in Ekelengi district. Here's a report. The place is quiet. No more trade and other economic activities taking place here. The road and other infrastructure begs for attention. The access road leading to Angola is in a bad state. 
This is Jimbe border post located in Ikerenge district, bordering with Angola in northwestern province. Revenue correction still remains a challenge due to bad road network, poor internet system connectivity, and the closure of the border on the Angolan side since last year in March. The visit by Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry Permanent Secretary Mushuma Murenga has motivated officers working here. I may say since uh, last year March, mm. we have never experienced not even you know, one motor vehicle coming through because of uh, the lockdown on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Before that, uh, the volume was uh, not that much. Maybe they used to clear sometimes two trucks or three trucks in a month. Okay. Yeah, uh, the contributing factor is uh, the the road network. In 2019, mm -hmm. we had uh, a very big margin mm -hmm. in terms of traffic. We had about uh, 3,000 plus. The permanent secretary also crossed on the Angoran site to meet the officers. So basically, we're just checking around the infrastructure mm -hmm. on the Zambian site, so we thought we just come on the Angolan side also to see what is in place. Yeah, so this visit has allowed me just to appreciate what is on the two sides and I'm happy it uh, looks like the two countries, the officials at the border are working very well together. Which is... It's also been, we are also grateful. It's clearly demonstrating that uh, that is the way the picture is shown how they stay here. Mr. Murenga had an to make. Paying a visit to the border post and seeing the infrastructure that uh, that that is here uh, has really shown the need to uh, really expedite the plans that government has. We, there's a plan to put a one-stop border post here with the infrastructure that comes with it. So it's been a very fruitful uh, visit and um, like I've indicated, we'll move with speed as Ministry of Commerce to ensure that we get all the institutions that are relevant and the ministries that are relevant to start discussing the situation that we found on the ground and ensure that we put in uh, the necessary measures. Ikeringa District Commissioner Abud Kawang is elated with the Permanent Secretary's visit. Ikeringa District is bordering with Angola and Congo. And uh, to improve trade between the two countries, we will need infrastructure. The infrastructure needs to be worked on, improved on. Krivach Tuta, reporting at Jimbe Border Post, Ikerenge District, Northwestern Province. This is Kamlet News. We take another set of commercials. Join me shortly for international and sports news. Dr. Pigron, Musei Bala Komuti and Daukuni, gift Naland. Which then Kubet will be Semojo, Vasayone. Mina Mush, Nakuleta and Jinga. Let us in a Rufesi Gia, Namawaipa. Diff code, Tidia Shian Jinga, Yam 19 Pendef code. Transport, we got it. Nanga Ford for communication. He put Sanachizungo. Yeah, you see what I mean? It's a camera, Diff code. It's communication, we got it. In the mommy, powerful system, Dimba Dimba, X Buzz. We got it. Kamlet News, 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 Kamlet we got it. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can take Arabic. Yes, my dear. Um, I was thinking of getting you a bogatse for huh? your birthday. Really? Hi, I'm quiet. My name is Yana. Vanga uh. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> That's why there is insurance. Insurance? You heard me. Not just any kind of insurance, but Savenda General Insurance, a company that offers superior customer service, highly professional and dedicated staff. We are not just any insurance company, but an insurance company that actually pays our claims. We cover, among others, fire, marine, aviation, engineering, agriculture, motor vehicle, and miscellaneous insurance. 
So, live life to the full, knowing that Savenda General Insurance has got you covered. Savenda General Insurance. Insurance excellence. It's finally here. Zambia is at the crossroads heading towards general elections this August. In the world where fake news, biased reporting on national issues has become the order of the day. In a world where social media in most cases spills lies and exaggerated information, insightful coverage, Zambia needs one media. Living in a country where people are slowly promoting tribalism, hatred, bitterness and revenge, political temperature is heating up and people's hearts are perplexed. Zambia needs one media. Zambia being a Christian nation living under the lordship of Jesus Christ, the nation cannot afford a compromised gospel. Zambia needs a prophetic media house. For hope, peace and unity, Zambia needs Kamnet Television for non-biased, factual reporting, balanced opinion, accurate news coverage, Zambia needs Kamnet Television. For national projects and development of our beloved country Zambia, watch Kamnet TV on channel 274 DSTV, channel 98 on Go TV and channel 106 on Topstar. Remember, Kamna TV is not just another channel. Thank you for staying on. The descendants of freed slaves in Kenya are now sitting, seeking official recognition of their ethnicities, which are not registered. The ancestors were rescued from ships bound for Zanzibar following the British ban on the Indian Ocean slave trade. In other news, Sunday is the final day of the U.S. Conservative Political Action Conference, and the most anticipated speaker is the last former president, Donald Trump. It will be his first major appearance since he left office. Trump is expected to make a pitch for the bitterly divided Republican Party to unite behind him. Here is a roundup of international stories. <laughs> the story of Frederick Uledi's family is one of great suffering and survival. His grandfather from Tanzania was enslaved, then rescued and settled here. It's in a community of people with similar histories called Freertown in Kenya's port city, Mombasa. It is something bitter to, to speak about it. Eh? You see, it will be taken from the place and put somewhere else. If only the Kenya government couldn't recognize us. The history of Freertown is told in a nearby mural. It's named after Bartle Freer, an officer in the British Navy, which, from the 1870s, enforced a ban on the slave trade in the Indian Ocean, controlled by Omani sultans. Enslaved people who were rescued at sea were settled here by the British, who were colonizing Kenya at the time. We met some of their descendants, who originate from all over eastern southern Africa. Grandfather came from Tanzania. Tanzania. We are Zulu. Our grandfather fathers are from Zulu, South Africa. Came from Nyasaland. Long, long time ago. It's a simple study. They told us it causes problems having an identity that's not among Kenya's official ethnic groups. It becomes very difficult for them to be registered because when they tell the officials that I am a Nyamwezi or a Nyasa, there's no such tribe in Kenya, or oh, I'm a Freertownian, he's not registered. They say young people in Freertown often deny their historical roots to register for ID cards or just to fit in. And is that the shrine there? Something that Patrick Abungu says is a problem. He's the curator of these caves, a heritage site widely believed to have once been used as a holding pen for enslaved people. We don't talk about it. It means we are silencing that dialogue and we are silencing a lot of people's identities. There are the remains of chains on the walls of the cave. According to local oral histories and archaeologists, this is where people were chained up and held captive for weeks before being led through these tunnels out onto the beach to slave ships waiting in the Indian Ocean. Historians say millions of Africans were enslaved and shipped across these seas to the Middle East and beyond over centuries. Many died on the way. Those who ended up in Freertown were luckier. The 
settlement was founded by Christian missionaries who built this church 140 years ago. Christianity is still going strong, but older members of the community worry their unique history is fading away and their identity with it. So thank you, CPAC. Thank you for being here. This is not the Republican Party. That party is at war with itself. One part, the moderates, are hoping to move into a post-Trump era. The Conservative Political Action Conference is home to the other half, proudly pro-Trump activists. And would you vote for the president again in 20? In a heartbeat. Most people look at President Trump and they think, I don't like the way he looks, I don't like the way he sounds. They don't look past that. They don't look at the policies. And I follow him based on policy. Moderates need not apply. Not here? Former Vice President Mike Pence, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and Congresswoman Liz Cheney, all moderates who have disappointed Trump. I don't believe that he should be playing a role in the future of the party of this country. The stars of CPAC are Trump stalwarts, like former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, a potential 2024 presidential contender who sounds like he's running against President Joe Biden already. In the last few months, we've been called clowns and deplorables and ignorant and rednecks. Uh, we've been called the evil resistance. The New York Times thinks I'm the worst Secretary of State of all time. But I, I'm proud of our fight and I'm proud of our accomplishments and that we have truly upended the status quo. And then there's House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy, who's made no secret where his allegiance lies in the party's divide. It was a forgotten man and woman that Donald Trump listened to the voice that no one else would listen to. And we're never going to forget that people, those people. And that's what we're focused on. Trump memorably announced his long-shot bid for the presidency at the end of an escalator. Donald Trump's speech to CPAC, his first major address since leaving the White House, is his most anticipated since he took that escalator ride into history. Outside of CPAC, the former president's visit has drawn both supporters... Stop peddling your socialism! ...and detractors. But inside CPAC, there's little doubt who the attendees favor for the presidency in 2024. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Orlando. We'll go straight into sports news. Molundu Empires has won the delayed Margaret Monacatwe tournament after beating Tiger Stairs by four goals to two and has paused March penalties after the game ended goalless. The tournament, which was which is held every year, also known as the Christmas tournament, was supposed to be played last year in December but delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the teams and their match on Margaret Monacatwe, who is Lusaka Central Member of Parliament, managed to host a sporting event braving the rainy weather details in this. Football unites the people from all walks of life and the Margaret Manakatwe Christmas Tournament is one such annual activity in Lusaka Central constituency. It brings together a number of young people to showcase their football skills much to the excitement of the local people. The final was played between Mulundu Empires in yellow and Tiger Stars in red. Mulundu Empires won the delayed Margaret Manakatwe tournament after beating Tiger Stars by four goals to two in a post-match penalties after the game ended goalless. The teams went away with cash and other gifts. The final of the tournament could not be held as planned due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Lusaka Central Member of Parliament, Margaret Manakatwe, has reaffirmed commitment towards supporting sports activity in the constituency. The lawmaker says football is critical in discouraging bad vices in the community, such as alcohol and drug abuse. Today, heads I win, tails I win. I want to thank you today, especially the youth. This is no day because the players in this tournament are eight, between 18 and 25. They are a youth team. And this is why I spend time with these youth to ensure that they can apply themselves gainfully in play. We have out of the stadium a percentage team to ever to be 
and raisers. We've sent teams to Europe. As we've sent individuals to Europe. And the organizers of the tournament thanked the lawmaker for the gesture. This tournament, this annual tournament, is always support us. Um, we just really appreciate for the madam because he's so supportive for us uh, and the community at large. We so we can say thank you as a community for that. Yeah. Patrick Soko, come at sport. Politicians are all going out in all sectors. We end our news on that note. We look at the top stories once again. The National Democratic Congress Media Director to report Chishimba Kamwili to the Drug Enforcement Commission. Mombwa Central Member of Parliament describes CDF disbursement as chaotic. The European Union confident of high voter turnout in the August 12th general elections. In international news, descendants of the freed slaves in Kenya seek recognition. And in sports news, Molundu Empires wins Margaret Monacato Christmas tournament. That's where we wrap it up for our news tonight. But before we just go, let's look at the verse for the day. And it's coming from James 1 verse 22 uh, to 24. And it reads, but be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in the mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, immediately forgets what kind of man he is. Thank you for joining us once again. My name is Sharon Kalimula. Remember to observe the COVID-19 health guidelines to stop the spread of the COVID-19. Thank you once again. Good night.